How's it going, everybody? Rocky Mountain DC here, and today I have another new video in a new series for you guys, and that is going to be the new Versus series. So in this video, we're going to be looking at the Spyderco Manix 2 versus the Spyderco PM2 or Paramilitary 2. And this is going to be a new series really looking at both within company knives and between company knives, especially looking at knives that are very similar in both price point, materials, and the overall design and function of the knife as a whole. So starting off and kind of kicking off this new series of the Versus series, we're going to be looking at the Spyderco PM2 versus the Manix 2. Now this is a very personal uh, opinion-based type of Versus series for me because I'm very torn between the Spyderco Paramilitary 2 and the Manix 2. However, at the end of this video, we're going to be reigning which one for me is going to be the supreme in the Versus series between these two knives. Now, it's also important to remember before I get into the actual review content that this is a lot of subjective based opinion. So this is going to be really what I'm looking for. I'm going to try to be as objective as possible and give you the most informative information that I can regarding the categories that I judge these knives on. However, if you disagree with my end point judgment at the end of this video, that is completely fine. You are entitled to enjoy whatever type of knife design that you want the most. And for me, I think that these are both great knives. However, only one knife in this video is going to reign supreme. So when we look at the categories that this Versus series is going to be based upon, it's going to be looking at the steel type, the ergonomics, the lock, handle material, blade shape, the looks of the knife, the weight of the knife, pocket carry, how does it carry in the pocket, deployment, how easy is it to deploy, and lastly, the price of the knife. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the video. But before we do, please be sure to like this video. And if you're not already, subscribe to the Rocky Mountain EDC channel for more video content like this. Thanks for watching. So looking at steel type. So we have the Manix 2 in CPM S30V. Both of these are gonna be the base model versions of the knife. And we have the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. So the Spyderco Paramilitary 2 is gonna be an CPM S45VN. Now, when we compare the S30V and S45VN, claims from knife critics and both Crucible and Spyderco as a general is that CPM S45VN is very comparable and very similar to S30V and S35VN. However, it's supposed to have a little bit more corrosion resistance than the other two models. Now, with my personal experience, this is the only S45VN steel on a knife that I have. I have several knives in S30V, and I can tell you that for some reason, I don't know if it's the heat treatment or if it's the blade grind or just this knife, but for some reason, S45VN in terms of edge retention does not hold a flame to S30V. And that is really going to be due to comparison of normal daily use, a month's worth for both knives, that the Manix 2 in S30V, that steel is just for me so much better um, for what I need it to be. I'm not really in a lot of conditions um, out here in the West in terms of a lot of moisture that I really need a lot of that extra corrosion resistance that this is really noticeable. I haven't really noticed a lot um, in terms of that corrosion resistance. Um, toughness seems about the same. Um, haven't noticed any uh, significant chips. Um, they seem to respond both the same, but the edge retention is very different that I've noticed between these knives. The Manix 2 and S30V is gonna reign supreme on the steel. 
So the Manix 2 is going to win on the category of steel. That S30V for me is just going to take an edge on that S45 EN based upon my experience. Next up, looking at the ergonomics, we have the Manix 2 and the uh, Paramilitary 2. Very similar knives in terms of the ergonomic profile. A lot of swells, a lot of divots, a lot of places to put that index finger in general. Now, the PM2 is going to be designed by both Sal and Eric Lesser, so father and son in terms of that knife design. And then the Manix 2 is really going to be kind of Eric's, the um, kind of take on a very ergonomic knife. So for me, what's really different in terms of the ergonomics is very minimal but impactful. So for me, the PM2 is very specific in terms of where you put your hand, right? Where you put your thumb on that thumb ramp, finger choil, front finger choil, main finger placement, where the palm goes. But it's specific without being annoying. So it's specific yet neutral. It is going to give you a good ergonomic feel without forcing you. That's what I notice about the PM2. A lot of extra space, very comfortable. The Manix 2 takes it a little step further and says, no, here's where you're going to be placing your hand. You have a little bit of a smaller or shorter handle material here in terms of that profile. So we can see that you're going to be a little bit more forced, especially down here with the pinky, where you're going to be placing your hands and that finger choil, especially with a more aggressive and more pronounced um, divide here between the uh, standard grip and the front more precise precision grip for that index finger. So this is going to have a little bit more of a precise feel, a little bit more kind of lock your hand in feel. Now the thumb ramps are going to be a little different. The Spartaco PM2 is going to have a much more aggressive, much more uh, swooped up thumb ramp versus the Manix 2 is going to have a much more gradual, yet the jimping is still going to be very nice and grippy on that thumb ramp. And this is a really hard one for me because one of the things is that it all comes down to preference and the Manix 2 just feels more comfortable in hand. I don't know what it is, but for some reason it just it just fits my hand. I have, I would say, a medium to large size hand, and it just fits my hand really well, and it's very comfortable in the hand, both in any position. The PM2 is comfortable in hand, but it just feels like it's, it's just missing something. It's a little too neutral for me, um, but keeping that in mind. So with that, the Manix 2 is going to win another point in the ergonomics. Next up, looking at lock type. So really when we think about lock type, we, we have to think about you know strength, but also ease of access. And the Manix 2 has, without a doubt, um, probably the strongest lock of the two. Now the compression lock on the PM2 is a strong lock. Without a doubt, these are both strong locks. It's a very hard comparison to make, but the Manix 2 uh, is going to have to take the win on strength of the lock. I mean, in order to get this knife to fail, you literally have to crush, you literally have to break a steel ball to get this knife to fail. And yes, to get it to fail, you could hypothetically break the spring, which is going to be a regular coil spring, which is going to be very strong, very unlikely to break. I mean, this is just a strong lock. The Manix 2, I'm, I'm sorry, the PM2 is also a very strong lock with that compression lock, and we have to think about those things. So in terms of strength, the Manix 2, I'm going to have to give it an edge. In terms of ease of use, I'm going to have to give it to the PM2 because this is just a little bit more easy to manipulate than the Manix 2. Now I see what 
uh, Spyrico was trying to do with kind of this um, kind of access here. Now, very similar to an access lock or any type of crossbar lock, but they, they just kind of missed the mark on that, uh, you know, catching here for, for ease of access. I think they didn't need to do this weird kind of chamfered uh, textured uh, thing here. I think they could have made a little bit more pronounced and it would have been a little easier to uh, take a hold of. So in terms of ease of deployment, I'll actually say that um, this is easier to manage um, in that compression lock on the PM2. So this is a really hard mashup for me in terms of the lock type. And in this case, even though I think that the ball bearing lock on the Manix 2 is great, it just, it just kind of misses the mark. I'm going to have to give the edge to the PM2 on the lock type on this one. So the Spartaco PM2 wins on the lock type there for me. Next up, looking at handle material. <laughs> I mean, both of the base models are going to be in this um, very grippy black G10. So the handle material itself is identical. So with the handle material being identical on the base models, this is actually going to be a tie on these two knives because Spyrico's G10 is a phenomenal G10 as far as knives go. And this is going to be the same G10 on both knives. So this is going to be a tie on that uh, category. Next up, looking at blade shape. This is a hard one because both of these are going to have a very leaf style uh, shaped blade. But we're going to have a far more uniform uh, blade shape on the Manix 2 and a little bit more... Uh, precise um, downward drop on the PM2 um, compared to the Manix 2. This is a really hard one in terms of blade shape. Personally, I think when we look at this uniform blade shape, the Manix 2 just is going to take it on that beautiful uniform shape. And it's also without a doubt when using it in tasks, that point is precisely at that center of pressure where I'm going to be putting that point through a specific material, especially like going through cardboard or I'm going through some type of hard material. And I'm going to be needing to put that max amount of pressure in line with the force that I'm applying. It's going to be really in line. The PM2 is sort of there, but because of this downward, very drastic downward drop relative to the PM2, uh, relative to the Manix 2, it, it just doesn't pierce as well with that precise, direct uh, nature. So with that, the blade shape for me, because they're both going to have very similar properties in terms of belly, the blade shape is going to have to go to the Manix 2 for me. So the Manix 2 is going to take it on the blade shape. In terms of looks, ooh, this is a hard one because this is, again, subjective. Which one do you think looks the best? Now, as far as Spyderco goes, we know that Spyderco is meant more for use, ergonomics, and not really meant for flashy looks. So this is kind of a hard one, but is easy considering both of these models are uh, the base models. For me, although the Manix 2 is just a phenomenal, again, it won in the ergonomics, it just looks like kind of a <laughs> ergonomic turd. Um, if I'm going to be honest, it looks like a fish in a bird and, and just an ergonomic turd. I mean, it is just kind of a chunky kind of thing in a way. And as far as looks go, the PM2, although it's not the, the best 
looking knife as far as knives go, it's gonna have that most aesthetic appeal for me. So in terms of looks, the PM2 is going to win in this category for looks. So let's talk about weight. So weight of the knives, the Spyderco PM2, I don't have the exact weights here, but um, the Spyderco PM2 is gonna be lighter. So they both have G10 handle scales, but the big difference in terms of the weight is gonna be due to the fact that the PM2 has partial steel liners and they are milled. So they do have holes in that liner. The Manix 2 is full stainless steel liners and it also has this uh, stainless steel um, kind of back casing here for the um, for this ball bearing lock mechanism. So this is going to make this a lot heavier of a knife, at least by a gram. So this is going to be at least a gram heavier than the PM2. Now that's going to be very preference based. Personally, they have very comparable locks. And again, the PM2 took it on the lock for me with a lighter profile. I'm going to have to give the weight in these base models to the PM2. So with that, the weight is going to win for the Spyderco PM2 because it's lighter but also very both strong. All right, so next up we have pocket carryability. Which one carries better in the pocket? So both of these are going to have Spyderco's standard um, pocket clip. So as far as that goes, none of these is, is deep carry for what you're looking for. It's going to have some portion of the blade sticking out of your pocket. Now, with me kind of blocking off this portion, this is what's going to be sticking out of your pocket. For me, I'm pretty sure it's obvious which one wins in terms of pocket carry. And that's going to be the Manix 2 because we have enough material sticking out for you to grab, but it's not annoying. When we look at the PM2, there's so much material sticking out that honestly it gets caught on a lot of different things and it's kind of annoying but this is enough material sticking out that if you need that quote unquote uh efficient grabbing on a standard uh pocket clip carry knife you have enough but it's not annoying it's not rubbing and, and getting caught on things so the manix 2 is going to take it the win on pocket carry for me Next up, we have deployment. And this is also gonna be very preference-based. What are you looking for in terms of deployment? And for me, it, it kind of goes to both. They have the spidey hole. They have very easily accessed one-handed hand, one -handed opening and closing locks, but it has to do really with the detent. So the Manix 2 is gonna rely on that ball bearing within the lock to act as the detent. So this is kind of a mushy, kind of a very soft detent, while the PM2 actually has a traditional detent ball, and it's gonna actually have a portion where you have to build up enough pressure before you uh, open up the knife. And this is very hard in terms of deployment because both feel very good. But in terms of sure deployment, consistent deployment, I'm going to have to give it to the PM2 because of that strong detent ball, that very precise portion where you have to build up so much pressure before it actually opens is just a lot more consistent and better feeling because sometimes I miss fire in terms of fast deployment on the Manix 2. So with that, the PM2 is going to win on deployment. So 
So the PM2 wins on deployment. And last up, the last category, we have the price. So as far as price goes, um, when we're looking at standard company price, um, so MSRP, we really see about 240 for the PM2, and we see about um, 220 for the Manix 2, give or take. So again, give or take. Now, when we talk about retail price, we see the PM2 at about 180, and we see the Manix 2 at about um, 160 in terms of that retail price. So as far as price goes, this is tough because again, it all depends on what you're getting. For me, I'm willing to pay a little extra on the PM2 versus the Manix 2. And for me, the price on the PM2 is gonna win. Just because I, I feel like it's not that big of a difference that I just think this is more worth it, um, especially when we compare those prices. So the price is gonna win on the PM2. So we're gonna tally up the scores So we have the Manix 2 getting a 5 out of out of 10, so a 5 out of 10, while the PM2 gets a 6 out of 10 in terms of the categories that are scored. So this is a very close mashup, very close versus series, and the PM2 just barely takes the win for me. Now, again, this is opinion-based, and I love the Manix 2. It holds a category for me, but the, the PM2 is just gonna take the edge by a hair. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a comment for which knife you prefer and why. And don't forget, if you're not already, to subscribe to the Rocky Mountain EDC channel and to give this video a like. Thanks for watching.